Okay, uh, in this talk, I focus on the underdetermined the inverse problem, actually linear system, uh, that is the a uh, fewer equation than the uh, unknowns. Okay, this talk is based on the joint work with my PhD students and uh, with this paper. And uh, this talk is focused on the, this type of linear system and also A is uh, somehow inaccurate. Some there is an error in the forward matrix. You try a uh, Y is the medical images. I try to solve the A Y equals to B uh, is under determined system. In this talk, many of my personal opinion not vigorous because you use the deep learning. I'll include it to give an uh, exaggerated emphasis on deep learning. The goal is to learn the function f uh, that, that maps from the data to the useful output. OK. Uh, this is called the yield post problem because that is the fewer equation than unknowns. So that is the violate Hadamard's well postness. That is the excluding existence because the uh, forward matrix is the not accurate. The existence does not mean anything. So AY equals to B is well post if each B that system has a unique solution, the solution is stable under perturbation of B. But that is depending on the, how you define the medical images. My, this is my personal opinion. Whether or not a problem is well posed may be depend on the how solution is expressed. Or many problems are ill posed because you are overly ambitious or lacking expressiveness. That's my personal opinion. And the conventional CT, I just focus on the CT and MRI. Conventional CT and MRI data collections are designed for the corresponding forward matrix A to be well posed and to be reasonably complete. That meaning is the number of equations approximately equal to the number of unknowns. Number of unknowns is the number of pixels. It's around 200, 512 times 512. So you try to make some system A is invertible. Somehow, fold matrix is invertible. But uh, the, the class, that's the classical principle of the Nyquist sampling, somehow related Nyquist sampling. That's the well postness. So MRI, this is the MRI case. This is the CT case. MRI measures the approximate uh, images Fourier transform. Nyquist sampling requires for the analytic reconstruction. Actually, you think about the analytic reconstruction. That is the number of pixels in image is approximately equal to sampling K space. That's the Fourier domain, K space. And the CT measures the approximately images Radon transform according to the somehow Nyquist sampling and Fourier slice theorem, square root of the number of pixels in image is approximately equal to the projection angles and uh, some detector, something related detector. Then question is that why you pay attention to underdetermined problem in CT MRI? Uh, uh, it is because of the great need to reduce the radiation dose, exposure of radi radiation dose in CT and the data acquisition time in MRI because uh, it takes a lot of time in data. So, the goal is to make the, this one, this ratio as small as possible. This number of equations over the number of unknowns. Number of equations is the some number of measurements, some measurement. This ratio is small as possible to reduce the radiation dose in CT and data acquisition time in MRI. That's why you are thinking about the, this type of ill posed problem. Okay, the solving this system is to find the reconstruction map. I call that is the F, function F. You try to find the reconstruction map from data to Y. Y is the, suppose this is a subsampling, this is a full sampling. And in the full sampling cases, the corresponding forward matrix is invertible. You try to find this map, but this is data deficiency is there. Is it possible to solve it? That's the question. Okay, I use the A full is the full sampling case mat uh, matrix corresponds to full sampling. This subsampling and this is subsampling operator. 
And the user A4 is the, this one, is the discrete Fourier transform in MRI, and the CT case is radon transform. Yes, so I say again, undersampling, undersampled MRI problem is that if using the just the 30 sam 30 percent of the full sampling cases, uh, this notation is a pseudo inverse minimum norm solution. This is minimum norm solution. Pseudo inverse of the that one is the this image. Uh, so goal is to find the map from the this image to the this full sample image. That's our goal. Is it possible? In the traditional sense, it is not possible, but it is possible. So how to solve the, this system with the undersamp data? Actually, because A is a yield condition, there are infinitely many solutions. This is a null space, is that some, this is a null space, and this is a solution space. A is, there are many, infinitely many solutions. Dimension of the, this is very large. Something dimension of the, this one solution space is the, very similar to the, so approximately similar to the dimension of the, the MR images, space, pixels, that one. So key is that you choose one, this is correct solution out of this. The meaning is that is, uh, you get a pseudo inverse of B, can you find a map from here to here? That's the, our question. So is it possible to find that one? <coughs> Solving this system depends on the appropriate use of the prior input. That's the prior information important. Prior information about medical image and MRI images as a solution. So you need to consider the, a constraint problem. Constraint problem, let me say this M is the solution manifold. This is uh, never know. It is impossible to know. So subject to this constraint, you try to solve this problem. So the way is that the, that's the pseudo inverse of the, this one, this one noise image, that should not include it in the, that solution manifold. Only this uh, true solution is contained in and the manifold, of solution manifold. But M is difficult to know. OK, okay. I think about the three examples. Sparse view CT problem is that this is a full sampling cases. Subsampling, you just get the part of the, this data. And then you put the zero fading. And then inverse, you get the, this image. The full sampling case is the inverse radon transform of that one. The goal is to find this one. That means that if we subtract that one, this one, then this type of image. Can you penalize the, this one? Actually, compress sensing technique is somehow penalizing the, this one, some cases. And the second thing is the local CT. Local CT is that you only measure the, just the, this part, local part of it. And using this one, and you also zero padding, reconstruct the images like that one. Then the, from here, can you reconstruct this one? If we subtract this one, and like this, it looks easier. It looks easy. But I, the local city, uh, why do we think about the local city problem? And the uh, Combim Dental CBCT, Combim CT, need to develop the reconstruction method that addresses the problem caused by offset detector because this one is expensive and you don't need to be large. And the uh, field of view truncation and the low X ray doses. So that's why we're thinking about uh, this local CT problem. Actually, this one is our real reconstruction result. And the example three, undersampled the MRI to uh, reduce the acquisition time. This is a full sampling in the case space. And this direction is the, let me say this direction is the frequency encoding. And this direction, uh, no, this, uh, this is a frequency encoding and this part is a phase encoding. So it takes time. The acquisition time is uh, proportional to the, the number of uh, phase encoding. So, Violating Nyquist sampling rule, 
then you have a subsampling. And then suppose it's a uniform subsampling, then you have the, this type of region, not the random sampling. If you do the uniform subsampling and the, and the Poisson summation formula, you have the somehow reactivity. And uh, can you unfold? The question is, the, can you unfold? And can you do from this, can you make that one? That's the question in the undersampled MRI problem. The, OK, there are two methods. Uh, roughly, method to solve the ill posed this problem is the two kind of met method. Actually, I will explain that this, is, this looks like a linear problem, but this is a very, very highly nonlinear problem. I'll explain later on about this one. The method to impose the prior knowledge on solution is the two kind. And the handmade, handmade is human made, and this is man made, this is a machine made, this is some deep learning technique. Okay. One is that use the sparse representation of the solution. The other thing is the using trial training data to get the prior knowledge. That's the machine, machine made. Handmade is the somehow uh, try to develop the, some basis to compare that one. Handmade sparse sensing is the use the immediate prior. Let me say this is a, some. Maybe uh, this is the uh, inverse gradient, some sense. And this one is also somehow used the wavelet or some whatever uh, basis. WH is the, let me say, Y. That's the image prior. And then you somehow this is sparse, sparse representation. That's the handmade sparse sensing. And here you use the single fidelity is used. And the machine approach is that you use the image prior, so you have the many uh, training data and put in there, you try to find the, this function itself. That's the difference between the machine made, handmade and machine made approach to solve the underdetermined problem. So I try to comparison. Uh, so using the sparse view CT model, and the sparse view CT model, Compress sensing methods are known to work very well. But this special example is a bit different. <laughs> I tried to make <laughs> this example. <laughs> OK. Uh, I tried to find this function from here to here. <laughs> and I tried to remove the, this type of lot of noise. And I tried to preserve two features. One feature, feature two is the two circle. The other feature is the something like the, this type of this feature, OK? Two feature, OK? Maybe compressing is impossible, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, so I used uh, this model, OK? Actually, this model is the actually seven-dimensional manifold, actually. I make the seven-dimensional manifold. Manifold is a bit complicated. This uh, dual of the radon transform and uh, some some several things around that. Uh, the reason why this is seven dimensional is that the, here is the, this circle put location center and radius is a six dimension and make the, the other thing. That's the seven dimension. So it's because of the, this seven dimension, this problem, if you have a, just the seven data, you can solve it. Yeah, seven, you can solve it. But assume you do not know the, this one, then how can you solve it? OK, we used uh, several techniques and the PCA and the Fourier, truncation of Fourier, Lopez filtering, and the Hall wavelet, some, some of sparse representation uses the Dovich wavelet and total variation and use the unit. Look at that. This, uh, this, everything is uh, somehow failed except the unit. Unit preserved this feature very well. Because this is very special example. Yeah. Somehow you, everybody say unfair. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, look at the PCA. Why PCA does not work? Uh, the produce the terrible outcome due to the use of the insufficient orthogonal basis. Number of orthogonal basis is not enough to produce the, that image. That's why that is corrupted. Uh, the total variation remove the key feature. But deep learning 
uh, keep the key feature. Uh, I will explain the why is that. Okay, here is the, the linear method. As consider this one is a y0. Consider the vector space spanned by the image. This one is a y0. And then rotate. Okay, rotate of the k fiable n. And then let me think about that, uh, that vector space. That, that vector space spanned by the, that rotation, that is a maybe this, this plane is the, that vector space. Now, I try to look at the middle of the, that one, middle of the, this image, rotation. This one, this one is the middle of that one. I try to project that image to the, this one, the middle image between this y0 and y1 cannot be expressed properly by the space spanned by the, this one. Because this is natural. Yeah? There is no type of, that type of signal is there. That's the, that's the reason why that is corrupted yeah? between that one. And that meaning is that if the uh, image is rotating, that is the highly, the manifold is highly curved in some sense. Yeah? Between here is the vector space spanned, spanned by this point, and you try to look at this image and project that one, then all the time corrupt like this. So linear method does not work. Because this, this problem is the linear problem, but it is not linear, it is highly linear. So that's the reason why that is corrupt. So PCA wavelet decomposition may not work in these cases. And the total variation approach is somehow total variation approach. Wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful approach. But this case is a li little different. Can compress sensing preserve the feature one? Feature one is the, this one. Why remove the artifact? Maybe not, because uh, this one remove the everything within the certain infodor without the exception. You cannot selectively preserve the some feature because some some norm they look at the, 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 the relation between that one, get rid of that one. So unfortunately, <laughs> this one looks like a very noisy like it. Yeah. So remove everything without the exception. The, the cannot preserve selectively. In these cases, this is maybe this is unfair <laughs> example anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Also, uh, performance depends on regularization parameter. Need to several iteration to find the sparse represent. This is a well known fact. However, uh, deep learning approach can selectively preserve the feature because uh, this one is a. Uh, X and this is output, you train that one. You try to look at the feature. And then after training, you already fixed that one. Without iteration, you just got it. Okay? It's a training process. You have many, many iteration, but it's a test cases just is just no iteration, non-linear, you get it. That's the advantage of that one. So let us uh, explain the deep learning approach in more detail. Okay. It's uh, using training data, both, the key is that the both F and image manifold such that, and all, uh, Y and all image manifold, you try to find that one. That's the goal of the deep learning approach. And, uh, one of the deep learning's most important advantages is to provide a non-interruptive reconstruction method for highly non-linear problems. The question is what is learnable, what is not? So here, uh, this part is a difficult part. Use a training data to get the prior knowledge. So that's the reason why deep learning approach highly depending on the quality of the training data. I'll explain the, this one. This is quality. Okay, this is denoising problem. I try to remove the, this denoising problem, denoise the, this image. Look at the lot of noises there. One is, there is anomalies there. I, 
Okay, I try to re remove the, this noise and preserve the, this, uh, this part, in the anomaly part. I use the three different uh, training data set. Uh, here, look at that. This is a disk and the rectangle. There is a no anomaly inside of the rectangle. So if you train this data set, this is the result that removes the small anomaly. But second training set is the anomaly in the rectangle. So if we train the F using the, this training data set, although anomaly is in the disk, they recover that one. OK? And the third thing is this. So important thing is the quality of the training data is very important in the deep learning. So that means the garbage in, garbage out. So important thing is the high quality training data. It's a highly dependent on the training data. Okay. The other observation is that reconstruction method is the learnable if A is satisfied. Uh, I try to define the MRIP. I somehow a little bit changed the <laughs> RIP condition. MRIP manifold restricted isometric property condition. That's the, actually exactly the same as the some sparse aesthetic. But I just changed this part. All possible uh, image in the manifold, I need that one in order to have uniqueness. That's the, if that is not satisfied, that is not normal. Uh, deep learning is not magic. <laughs> mm. I try to explain that one. <laughs> that meaning is that the RIP condition is somehow related to uniqueness and stability. Look at this line. This line is all possible solution of the, the linear underdetermined system. And this is a solution manifold. This is a M prime, that's the X part. I try to map from here to here. Then the, the intersection M image and all possible uh, this one uh, solution space. That dimension is very high, but intersection point should be just one point. That that is that MRIP condition. <laughs> that meaning is that this manifold is too much covered. That's the intersection point, the two two part, that it is not learnable. I also show the evidence. And first, I explain the why this uh, AYB is highly nonlinear problem. Okay, uh, that is very simple. A is the number of equation times the number of unknown matrix. Let us assume M image is the somehow represented by low dimensional representation. Let me say G is a generator. A H is a latent variable. It's K, the low dimensional latent, low di dimensional representation. Okay, observation is that this uh, reconstruction map is uh, non-linear if the dimension of the, uh, this one, this is a derivative of the, that meaning is a tangent vector of the manifold. Tangent, the tangent span of the tangent vector of the manifold, that dimension is the bigger than number of equation, that problem is non-linear. That meaning is that the map can be viewed as the image restoration function with filling in the missing data in X, therefore gradient F depending on the image structure. Because it's a gradient is also depending on the image structure. The filling in the something, using the surrounding information you're filling in. And also observation of non-linearity F is affected by sampling and the degree of the bending of the manifold. How uh, this manifold is the bending. So proof is the very simple. Okay, f of x, y is just written as this one. And then y is, suppose y is represented as the low dimensional representation, h is rated variable. And then take the derivative, take the gradient with respect to h, if H, F is, uh, this is linear, then gradient, uh, gradient F is constant matrix. In that case, is tangent vector of the, this manifold is the eigenvector 
eigenvector of the, this matrix corresponding to eigenvalue 1. So, in order, that meaning is that this all tangent dimension of the dimension of span of the, this all tangent vector is bigger than number of equation, this is not possible. So the here message is the degree of the nonlinearity depends on the sampling of the data B and the degree of the bending of the solution of manifold. So this gap is big, then nonlinearity is increasing. So number of data, no, um, dimension of the measurement data is the small, then nonlinearity is increasing. Okay, now, okay, let's look at the, at the, and the sparse style, go back to how it works in the deep learning. Both in the sparse POCT cases, both deep learning and complex sensing working very well for this kind of problem. Because uh, in this type of total variation, this type of technique is penalized this one very well. So get rid of this one and preserve the remaining thing. So that's the reason why total variation, also at the deep learning technique, both working very well. In the local CT problem is that, look at this one, in this direction, this one is the some kind of the analytic, analytic. This one is the somehow related Hilbert transform. This is analytic in, along this direction. The meaning is the, uh, analytic meaning is the small information determined everything. Analytic means the local information determine the global information completely. So it is low, low dimensional, so deep learning working very well. The last thing in example three, under determine the MRI, okay. According to the Poisson summation formula, discrete Fourier transform of the B that is the uniform subsampled data with the factor four. Okay, don't know why and the other compressions is uh, do not use the uniform samplings. Random sampling, <laughs> that's the reason why to make the noise. And then here is a, suppose it's a uniform subsampling with data factor four, then you have a four folding, four folded images. Okay. Then can you in the deep learning can find the map from here to here? My answer is that Yes or no? It, uh, somehow no. The main reason is that this one. Uh, this violated the MRIP condition. Okay, look at that. Uh, here is a cancer here. Here is a cancer here. Okay, these two images produce the exactly same X. So deep learning also confused about it. Confuse one. This one does not satisfy our MRIP, restricted isometry principle condition. Deep learning is not magic. So how can you from here to map this one? This should go this way, this way. Is deep learning also confused about it? So in the, this is uh, the result. In this case, uh, deep learning result is like this one. But interesting thing is that if you add uh, one line in the case space, one line of the case space, then situation is uh, dramatically changed. Deep learning working very well. So strat that is the strategy of the deep learning is very important in these cases. If we just add the, just one line, that's the maybe less than 1% of the data, and then this one learning very well, this does not learn. Key idea is that, okay, this four image provide the exactly same thing. But if you add the one line, then there is a difference. Because of this love signature, it is capable of learning F of the, this one. So deep learning strategy also is uh, very important to learn something. And uh, the other interesting thing is that because uh, you people try to shrink the size of the input, but is it better? Sometimes it's no. Okay, you let us complain the learning ability issue, patch image, full image. It's, uh, 
actually, uh, the method is the same. I try to learn the, just the, this one to hear the patch size. Yeta, here, yeta is the width of the, this image. Instead of learning the full image, what about learning the, this one? OK. Here, look at the, here is the yeta. Number of equations is the number of unknowns. This gap is wider. So the meaning is that small patch is better. But that is not true. That is not true. Because uh, I think dimension of the manifold is uh, like this, not much increasing. Even this one is increased. Uh, this is also my personal opinion anyway, maybe wrong. Okay. It's, uh, this is uh, M image manifold is uh, somehow two, 256 is this one, eta is uh, this one, is image patches extracted from Y in the true image. Dimension of manifold does not increase proportionally to eta. Hence, learning ability about this one is gradually improved as eta increases. So full image, somehow three-dimensional imaging probably better because manifold dimension does not much increase. So you did the experiment. Look at this point is a solvability region. Okay, he get patch size smaller. It, uh, this is terrible. In the certain period, this image is getting better. Okay. Okay. The reason for expecting dimension of the, this manifold grows significantly slowly as yet increases is the following. Assume Manifold is a set of all human head image, then all image in M possess the similar anatomical structure that consists of the skull, gray matter, white matter, cerebellum, and others. In addition, every skull and tissue in the image have a distinct feature that can be represented by non-linearly by relatively small number of latent variables. So that's for the entire image. Notably, skull and tissue of the images are spatially interconnected. Even if the part of the image is missing, the missing part can be recovered with the help of the surrounding image information. That's why dimension does not increase like, does not increase like this. So full image is better to learn. It, that's my point, my personal opinion. OK. And uh, I tried to uh, explain the challenge, several challenging issue. And uh, I have a six minute and challenging issue uh, about this. Uh, low dimension, so low dimensional representation of MR and CT image is very important. There is a two kinds of method, GAN. GAN is generative adversary network and uh, variation of the encoder. The meaning is that given data distribution in medical images, or such as the dental CT data, can you find the low dimensional latent generator? That's the decoder and encoder. It's such way to represent that one. Okay. One of the challenging issues for solving ill post problem is to find the low dimensional representation. So H is a latent representation, H is something like a string. Somehow, Using this string, I try to make the many kind of the something like the images, like that one. So you try to find this entangled expression with extracting the underlying explanatory axis, like the Leora da Vinci. Okay, here is the, this one is somehow working the EIT system. Oh, this, uh, there is a no sound. Okay, I quickly remove that. And uh, okay, because of time, I quickly moved it. Okay, here and uh, learning this thing, and uh, I used uh, just the seven latent variable. It is working very well. Very low dimensional cases working very well, and then it it is successful in some sense. The question is that what about the low dimensional representation of high dimensional images such as MRCT images? Ah, oh, my group is working hard. So far, 
maybe the other team may be successful. My team has tried several kinds of the guns and variation of the encoder, but has not succeeded. I succeeded the previous thing, but the low-dimensional cases, very simple cases, but this case not succeeded. We did uh, several, uh, this is a variational order encoder, or the order encoder, you all the time, you get the broad DVG. Now I understand uh, why this type of things happened, but uh, this is secret to my, my student find it, so it's, uh, I should keep secret. And uh, generate a adversary network gun is somehow Okay, gun does not work, this gun does not work. Wasserstein gun, PG gun, somehow provided the very similar images. The problem is that this. Autoencoder learns bidirectional mapping, that is the encoder and decoder, while guns learn the only unidirectional mapping <laughs> decoding in high dimensional medical image. Low dimensional cases, it's work, gun. Gun is working, but high 500 times 500 image is difficult. All the encoder can control the, this latent variable very well. So, however, high dimensional data, all the encoder suffers from image blurring and loss of small detail in, the, in my team, not here. And the gun have a remarkable ability to generate all kinds of this image, but guns have a difficulty in encoding high dimensional image. That's the, our trouble so far. And uh, the other challenging issue is generalization. Okay, so you have a children and they, you somehow study, they memorize the learning material very well. They hope problem that does not appear in the tutorial also find the correct answer. That's our hope to recognize, generalize the feature. Uh, that is not simple anyway, <laughs> but uh, that is the, there is a lot of example. Recently, several experiments regarding adversarial classification have shown that deep network obtained via gradient disk-based error minimized procedure are vulnerable to various noise-like perturbation resulting in the incorrect output. This is the, Look at the, this is exactly the same image. You added a little bit noise, but result is completely different. Here result is completely different. Yeah. And uh, let's check, test the amnesty example. This is easy to say. You just attacked the one pixel attack. Human, distance human. Okay, this one, this is same, yeah, human. But machine, this one identify one, this one is identify eight. It's quite complex. This is uh, very vulnerable to noise. <laughs> so this is a machine. Human recognize very well. Machine is different. The main reason is that the uh, adversary attack is that you find, if you look at the back propagation, you look at the, this part. This part is the, uh, very sensitive to noise so that uh, if you change the, just the one thing, uh, this is classified, put it here, this confuses between six and zero, and uh, this one is confused, classified one. So somehow, human no mistake, but it's a machine mistake. So challenging issue is the normalization of input data. Normalization is that, okay, radiologist, <coughs> this one distance, distance is zero. Radiologist, this one, this one, the distance is zero. How can I make the normalized images to that one? Okay. Because measured data is, is uh, the practice measured data is exposed to various noise sources such as machine dependent noise. Therefore, developed algorithm must be stable against uh, perturbation due to the noise sources. Hence, normalization of the input data is essential for improving the robustness and the generalizability of the deep learning network against the adversary attack. Okay, this is the last slide, I guess. Final remark is that historically, this is mathematics. Historically, our mathematician have tried to find a well-posed model by imposing appropriate constraint to solution space. In the simple Dirichlet problem, it 
took decades to find, maybe 100 years to, approve, to find appropriate uh, space, sublevel space. Maybe it can take the decades to solve the, this uh, challenging problems in deep learning. Actually, so even though simple theory, there's uh, infinitely many solutions, you need to somehow impose the, uh, the sublevel space. Okay. Now it's just one minute to <laughs> test. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope we'll discuss various challenging issues during this meeting. Thank you. Yeah.